so I bought this big lot of postcards and I bought them quasi sight unseen, which is a horrible idea, which I don't recommend. But these pandemic times call for some some uh, crazy sourcing sometimes. So I took it. I took a risk. Figure, you know, I'm not going to lose money. I can sell them somehow, some way. And I thought it might be interesting to go through and show you what those somehow, some ways are and why. And these are not very exciting postcards. I'm sorry to say. This isn't like, look at the awesome postcards I got. This is like, look at the bread and butter kind of boring postcards I got. And here's how I'm going to make a profit on them. Part one, I'm going to start with, um, I think this pile here and talk about these and put these over away. So these are the ones that I think are going to sell as postcards or have the potential to do so, but are not crazy desirable and might take a while or might not sell for much. So my goal here is to get between, we'll say between five and $12 for each of these. Honestly, I'm aiming for the $9.50, $10 sweet spot, but it might not be possible on some of them. So I'll show you what I've put in this pile and talk about why and what they are. So firstly, I divide them into ones I'm going to indi list individually and ones I'm going to list in small lots. We'll do the individuals first. So my aim for $10 pile. <laughs> All right. Here is a quick tour of vintage postcards. <laughs> These are all um, pretty much from the 40s or earlier. There's a few outliers. And a lot of them are in that nice postcard spot of the teens and 20s or earlier, but they're still not super exciting ones. So here's a quick tour. This is East River Drive at Columbia Ave, Vermont Park, Philadelphia. This one I'm listing because it has some nice cars, some nice canoes and a kayak. It's not a super common view, albeit a bit touristy. And this is a pretty early, I can't tell you the date exactly, but it's somewhere between the teens and the 20s, I'd say. Um, and it's not a linen postcard, though it is approaching that style, but it's printed on a smooth stock. It does have the white border that was to come in for reasons of war austerity and depression austerity. So um, this one I will try to list for between $9.50 and $12.50 and aim for getting between $5 and $10. Here's a humor postcard. I don't usually like to deal with these, but we have it and it's kind of cute actually. So we'll, we'll go with this one. Um, it is a linen, which you can tell by the texture of the paper. I know that probably doesn't tell you much, but it has a, let's see if they sound different. Yeah, see, this sounds smooth. That sounds patterned or textured. Has a sort of a plaid laid finish to it. And this one, again, these are all going to be in the same price range. This is a Grant's Tomb postcard, which subject matter wise, I would stay right away from Grant's Tomb postcards. They're so common and I can't even imagine why someone would collect them, though maybe someone does. This one, however, is super early. It's a uh, undivided back. Actually, I really like the back. <laughs> it's quite attractive, but um, I'm going to list it for that reason because it's so early. It's a sort of interesting rendering. This is not a real photo or anything. This is a printed card in black and white. Here we have a birthday card. It's um, 
maybe desirable for the quote unquote cute kid. I actually think this child is a bit scary, but some people might think it's cute. It does have some uh, religious verbiage on it and it is specific to the third birthday, all of which are ever so vaguely uh, differentiating. Somebody might like the, the illustration. Here we have a flat iron building and the things I just said about Grant's tomb, same. This is a super, super common view, very touristy. The only things that really recommend this card in particular are that it's it's early, um, it's postmarked 1907, which means it's from then or before. And other uh, versions of this view tend to have a big white border or a white border. And it's just kind of nicely colorized and has a lot of cars and people and stuff. So we'll give it a shot. This one says hearty greetings from and then somebody has stamped their name in here Horace R. Bands. This doesn't have a great chance of selling unless somebody from the Bands family finds it and that seems like a very unusual name but that's what might sell it or somebody I guess might want to cut it up for crafting I don't know it's not that great it is embossed and it is early this one, I would almost have recycled, except for what's on the back. So this has a uh, sort of derogatory poem about farmers on it, and this picture, and it's like, kind of got some uh, paper loss, and it's, uh, you know, somewhat unattractive. <laughs> but it is, in fact, a, an advertisement for a tobacco advertisement. Sweet Colleen Cut Plug. I guess it's Irish tobacco. But anyway, the fact that it's a tobacco advertisement is what saved this from the recycling bin. So we'll list it as such. Here we have a Swiss Alpine situation with these are like the heights of the peaks. And again, this is nothing super special, but worth a list. This is just a printed colored postcard. I don't know when it dates to, could be 20s, could be 30s, and there we go. Here we have a Christmas postcard, and I would have usually lauded this with some other ones, but something about this kept catching my eye, well, the something being the typography, and I know this is still in the world of sort of Edwardian post-Victorian fussiness, but there's something super modern about the way they did this typography, the big red 25 just smacks of like the modernist graphic design to come and it just I don't know something about it just really appealed to me visually so I'm hoping that someone else will feel that instinct too and find this attractive it's just a Christmas card it's got embossing postmarked 1909 but who knows all right this is a uh, cenotaph I believe it's in England a cenotaph is a monument to World War I. That's, that's it over there. But what's cool about this card is that there's all these cows sleeping under this tree. And I think maybe a person too, but maybe it's just cows. I don't know, I just really like this view because it's so quirky. There's the cenotaph, but here's some cows in the foreground. I like that one. Okay, this is one of those outliers. This is obviously newer than the 40s. It's um, probably from the 70s or 80s. And this is really nothing special, but it is, you know, a discontinued airline. And I don't have any other ones to lot it with right now, so I'm going to just list it, but I don't really have high hopes. Here we have a ship. This is specifically the... Well, it's one of the following, uh, President Jackson, President Monroe, President Hayes, President Van Buren, President Adams, President Garfield, or President Polk. And it's the American president's line, shockingly enough. So this isn't as collectible as, say, a Cunard or White Star ship or, you know, a proper ocean liner. I assume this is a, like a river cruiser thing, but, um, hey, it's worth listing. 
it's a ship. Ships are good. And I have a whole mess of them. So if I can um, find the lowest common denominator on the condition, I will just list these. I'll just list these as a multiple. Here's another multiple one. So I have two of these and one of these that go together. And I might do a lot with these two and one separate. So this is the new swimming pool at Pleasant Ridge House. That doesn't mean much to me, but on the back it explains that Pleasant Ridge House in the Pocono Mountains is has a it's a vacation place with Christian clientele, a free concrete swimming pool, excellent tennis court, blah blah blah. This is apparently from the 40s or a little earlier. And something about the Christian clientele just kind of struck me as curious. And um, so I think there might be a, an angle to list these and maybe some sort of connection to people that will cause them to buy it. So there's one of those and then two. So I might do 950, 1250 or something like that. Value is uh, relative. And again, these are not real photos or anything. And I'll actually show you that under the magnifying glass because this is one of the things I wanna make sure to talk about. Let's see if we can see the dots. So can you see those little dots? That's how we tell that it's printed, not a real photo. You see them, that little grid? This is a European postcard and uh, I usually don't find European scenes to be, touristy scenes to be very sellable. I'm gonna give this one a shot just because it's kind of colorful and interesting and has an unusual location. It's Loschwitz, which must be in the Alps or somewhere, Germany, Switzerland, I'm not sure. Just it has a town scene and the whatever this church or whatever is up on the hill and this tramway. This one might have made it to the next level up of more pricey cards, except that it's been butchered quite severely. Um, somebody cut it. That is uh, going to take its value down and possibly <laughs> destroy its value completely, but I will check if any others are listed. This is um, First Line Battleship Wyoming, and it says here, authorized by censor, which makes me think that this was printed during the war, um, World War One. that is. We'll see. I mean, nothing important has been cut off, but it's just an ugly deformity here. Here's another one of those same president ships. Let's put that with the other ones. Okay. Here is another street view Sunday afternoon at the Lakeshore Lincoln Park, Chicago. I think there was another one kind of like this where it's just, it's not that unusual view. It's very touristy, but lots of interesting old cars, lots of people. The colors are nice. It is um, actually not a linen card, though it's in that style. It's printed on smooth paper, but it does have the white border and it's that sort of style. So we'll give this one a shot. Might not sell for much, but hopefully it will sell. Here we have a baseball card of sorts. <laughs> um, this is actually from the 70s, 1973. It says down here. And this is, um, this guy's actually an umpire so I don't think he's super collectible I'm not exactly a baseball expert but that's my theory but he might sell for 10 bucks or five bucks we'll give him a shot this is some Japanese masks dance masks the sacred treasures Hakaman shrine Kanakura don't know much about these and I don't read Japanese but this seems kind of different enough that somebody might be interested in it. This one, New Year's, I don't really like selling New Year's cards. I don't think they sell very well, but we have this one and it's kind of novel compared to some with a bird carrying a letter across the globe and the sun rising and this uh, sort of Art Nouveau type here and the candle, kind of a weird scene. So we'll, we'll give this one a shot. Here we have new Howard Hotel in Baltimore. Hotels are hit or miss. Some are great. Some are too common. This one, I feel like it's a little bit uncommon. It's old. This is an old card. Um, it's also not in very good shape, but it's attractive enough. So we'll see if anyone collects Baltimore hotels or something. Asbury Park, again, very touristy place, dime a dozen. 
but I did kind of like the night view of the fair or the boardwalk, the weird cartoony birds up here that don't go with this style at all. And it's just kind of a weird glom together design here. It's kind of an unusual one. I don't see this one that commonly. So I thought we'd give this a shot as well. Here we have an early German quasi humorous <laughs> card. I guess it's supposed to be humorous. I thought this could appeal to someone, the delicatessen. I'm a funny guy with the flowers. This is printed in Germany, but I don't know much else about it. It says, uh, Verlag Neumeister. Um, What's kind of interesting is that I feel like a lot of people list Verlog as a maker or a type of card, but in fact Verlog just means um, printer publishing house. So that's not <laughs> not quite right. Neumeister would be the printer on this, so it's like the Neumeister Verlog. I mean, that's neither here nor there, but just so you know. I don't know. It's kind of cute, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Oh, I'm so grumpy. This is not old either. This is from Nantucket. I guess this is a store. It could be a pub, but it looks more like a store. And it's called the Cockeyed Dove. I don't know anything about it. I might want to look it up. This is clearly not old. Could I mean, this could be from the 80s, 90s. Could be from yesterday for all I know. I don't know how it got in this lot. Rather than, you know, chuck it, I thought I'd try to list it. Who knows? Somebody might have fond memories of the cockeyed dove. Okay, Mount Rushmore. Again, I normally would just stay right away from Mount Rushmore postcards because they're so common. But this one was vaguely interesting in that it had the before and after. And there's also a lot of brouhaha going on right now with, you know, monuments, statues, presidents, and founding fathers of questionable moral character, etc., etc. So I thought it was worth a list. It's slightly unusual design for a Mount Rushmore card. Not crazily unusual, but a little bit. This is a linen again. It's got the texture and the white border and is probably printed in the, I don't know, 30s, maybe 40s. Another one, this is not a linen, but it, you would never know unless you touched it. This is going on my obscure hotel theory. This is the Hotel Wilmington in Wilmington, Delaware. I just feel like I don't see that many hotels from Delaware postcards, so maybe somebody's looking for this. It ha they have running water in all rooms. So there you go. And you can kind of date it from the car there. This is another hotel. This one is the Sedgefield Inn in Greensboro, North Carolina. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a resort. I thought this was an attractive enough card that if somebody is keen on this place, if it still exists, or they are keen on the memory of this place, it might sell. Here we have a World's Fair card. These are very common, this card and similar cards. But this one was particularly new and crispy and the color is so nice that I thought it might be worth giving it a try. It's just in very good condition for one of these. Another hotel, this is the Awani Hotel and Half Dome in Yosemite. Again, uh, national parks are a very difficult sell. Just so common. I mean, everyone who goes there buys a postcard, I think. Though I don't think I bought any postcards in Yosemite. I might have. I'm pretty sure I didn't, actually. I was like really into analog photography when I was there and I was taking all these crazy pictures with modified plastic cameras. Anyway, this is just slightly unusual enough that it might Go. It does have an issue condition with some paper missing in the corner, dated 1938. I mean, the post dated. It's not, I mean, it could be from any time before that. Here we have the Merit Maryland Casualty Company building and tower in Baltimore. Insurance is a category people collect, although relatively unremarkable. This view does have some old cars. So, we will give this a list. And finally, in this pile, what I think is a rather unattractive bunch of chrysanthemums or something on gold. Um, this I would like to put in a lot, but I don't really have anything it goes with, so we'll just give it a list. Um, this is a winch postcard, which you can tell by this insignia thing here with the, the little squares and the leaves and the shoo shoo swirly thing. Um, and that is a known and collected publisher. So that's all it really has going for it. Maybe someone will find this more attractive than I do. That's my pile of, of the ones I'm going to list individually for the lowest price. And 
be super happy if any sell for $10. Also in the same sort of category, I made some lots of ones that were either in or sub $10. Amelia, these hopefully will sell better together. This one we have two Easter chicken postcards. Easter does not sell that well, no matter how cute I find. This one is actually a tux, which is a good selling point. This is again a, a collected publisher. This one is not, but same sort of era, printed in Europe, same kind of style. So I put them together and that is our baby chicken lot. These are all to my dear father, to my dear aunt, to my dear mother. Obviously these two go together and that one doesn't, but we'll put them together nonetheless. I don't know why someone would buy these, but we hope that they will. And these are embossed. This one has some nice gold ink and embossing, but they're relatively unremarkable and uncollectible. So we'll see what we can do with those. Again, this is going to be, I price this lot for $12.50 and hope somebody, you know, pays seven or something. Maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised. Here we have Happy New Year. We have pansies and we have Happy New Year tulips. They look nice together. This is just pretty. Not much else to um, say for it. They're a little bit they have some foxing, this brown staining, but these are not really valuable enough that I'm going to spend much time fussing over it. People with dogs will know the problem of finding which end of the bag opens. All right, this lot is sort of charming Edwardian people. We have Those Were Happy Days with some fabulous Gibson girls and uh, bright young things on their porch swing all through my lifetime so tenderly out in the woods. And this is actually a song and this is a series of illustrated cards from songs of the time. I'll leave my happy home for you. I guess that's romantic, but it's kind of ominous. These uh, are going to be a set of Edwardian people. These are both similar. We have happy birthday, happy bir uh, birthday greetings, and these are both winch cards, clearly from a series. This one is kind of, um, and one of them is kind of de delaminating, as you might say. Yeah, so you can see how this is constructed in two parts with a thin paper attached to the embossed board. Obviously, I could just stick this back down with a bit of glue stick in a second, which I might do before I scan it, but it is kind of interesting to see how they're made. These feel soft and floppy because both pieces of paper are pretty thin compared to your usual cardstock. This lot is on a Scottish theme. We have, well, I'm not going to do a Scottish accent because I'll just embarrass myself, but these are humorous views of Scotsmen with their whiskey and soda and black pudding, haggis, some other vile traditional <laughs> Scottish fare. So these clearly go together. They're kind of novel. I haven't seen these before actually, so I think that's a good a good set to uh, put together. Maybe I'll list these at a little higher as a lot, fourteen fifty or eighteen fifty for the best offer. This uh, grouping again. I think this is just pretty stuff. Girl, cute girl, birthday flowers. Uh, no cute girl birthday flowers. Uh, house birthday flowers. House and flowers, not birthday. Just whatever this is. I kind of, I like the, there's like the silver metallic ink has a texture in it. Like it's like got these embossed lines. It's kind of cool. Actually, I guess that's the paper. Yeah, the whole paper is this embossed striated texture. It's just like, it's not linen. It's um, It's got a texture of stripes down it. Some best wishes birds. This bird to me looks not, it does not look best wishes. It looks like I'm gonna peck your face in if you touch my babies. But times are different then. So these are, these are pretty, pretty flowery, birdy, blah, 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 a lot. We'll put the other. Again, I'm only going to list this for $12.50 or 
because I feel like these are individually unsaleable. So if I get something for them, I'll be well chuffed. Then we have a little Easter lot with cute bunnies as so. These are dirty, <laughs> kind of dirty. And I wanted to show you that although you might want, not want to bother for things that are, you know, going to sell for so little, that you can clean them up a little with the plastic eraser. This one is Stadler, which is very common. Any art supply store or place like an art supply store should have these. You just, it won't, it won't damage the paper if you just kind of give it a scrub. And it should take off some of that age. <laughs> that scuffing and aging stuff. I don't know if you can even tell, but it's it's cleaner here than it is here. Like there's a distinct line. Let's see. Can you see that? I don't know. Let's clean up some more. I mean, I usually wouldn't bother with this unless I was kind of bored <laughs> on something like this, but it does, it does look a little better. It's a subtle but relevant difference. So that's a little trick. Clean bunnies, that's what we want. Clean bunnies. If you've ever had pet bunnies, you know they are the furthest thing from clean. Well, they are, but their surrounds are not. Okay, and finally, this lot is, these are all real photo postcards, but they are all just sort of anonymous people. And so we're, I just decided to list them as a lot. So if we compare these, the areas of tone are discontinuous. So that's how we know it's a photo postcard. Aside from the fact that you can just kind of tell visually that this is a photo postcard. And wait, I'll show you on this one you can kind of see that it has this metallic effect in the blacks at certain angles. And that is solarization, which is a thing that happens to photographs, sometimes over time or sometimes because they've been developed improperly or fixed improperly. And it's just a, a chemical reaction. This is, you know, this looks fine, but you can get that that hint that it's a real photo by tilting it and seeing the solarization. So this lot includes more Edwardian people on a swing. These two fine fellows who are in fact named, which is kind of cool. Um, Brother William and chum Nathaniel Bropst in Hamburg, PA. I don't know. I like them and their, their hairdos and their gothic revival chair. This again is a real photo postcard. It's a different style. This is typical of earlier ones where it's been masked. In other words, when they went to develop the negative, they put it in a holder with a round hole in it so that the edges were blocked out and only this part had light sh shine through it and develop creating the oval frame effect. So yeah, this is typical. The smaller picture in a lot of white space is often found in earlier ones. So this is not a very exciting card, but it will go fine in the lot. It is an undivided back, which is a sign of being very early. We have this fine Edwardian family with no information. And this fine Edwardian family with some information. And um, you might think this isn't a postcard, but if you look at it very closely, you can see there are the address lines here faintly. So someone's chosen to use it more like a note card. If this woman in some sort of ethnic garb and this fine fellow in his frock coat, or I guess that's an overcoat, isn't it? Either way, a dashing coat. And these people will all go in a lot together. I don't know, I, I might price that at 1850 with best offer. And those are the lots. And so that is the end of this video. And 
subsequent episodes of this exciting series, we will go over other postcards <laughs> that I'm going to sell at other price points and in other ways. So I hope this was in some way useful to you and thank you and take care.